My name is TJ Owens. I am the uh, cultural program manager at the African American Culture and Heritage Facility. I want to say thank you all for taking the time to join us this evening uh, for The Pivot. This is our second installment of our Mind, Body, and Soul series. Uh, and for those who tapped in for the first episode in March, we focused on mental health and just how it is a direct investment into the body and also some of the correlations behind the stressors that we expose ourselves to in our everyday lives and how they can affect our mental fitness. So we're taking it a step further. We're going to do the same thing when we talk about how our bodies actually correlate with our minds. So this evening, I want to welcome two professionals uh, that we have that are going to talk about physical fitness and also chiropractic care. We have Dr. Marshall Freeman, who has his own practice, Back to Life. And we also have David Braswell of Outright Fitness. Gentlemen, thank you for taking the time this evening to join us. Absolutely, man. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well, let's, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. For, you know, a lot of people, when they think about how they start their careers and, and kind of how they, where they end up at it, it's kind of a, a twisty and, and kind of a, has some journeys, you know, pitfalls and, and hills and things like that along the way. It's very unconventional. So I would love for um, David, for you to kind of just start off, just kind of talking about, you know, where you're from, how you got into fitness and what really drew you into the industry. All right. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Yes. So I've been in um, I've been in business for about ten years. Uh, I'm originally a and I grew up in part in Fort Mill, right down the street in Round Rock, and uh, I'm a military brat. So. Um, exposed to um, fitness early on. Um, I, I enjoy being outdoors. You couldn't keep inside uh, unless I was grounded. <laughs> and um, I just had a passion for fitness. I had a passion for the outdoors. And I think that really just kind of naturally gravitated into um, running track. So uh, track was the, my primary sport in high school and when I went off to college. And I went from that to coaching kids, um, personal training with adults. And that kind of just led me, fast tracked me into what I'm doing today. Awesome, awesome. Dr. Freeman, I'd like to ask the same question of you, especially going into chiropractic care. Um, maybe just talk about how maybe you didn't see a lot of people like you, you know, maybe within the industry and kind of what pulled you into uh, wanting to start your own chiropractic practice. Right, so it's funny. Um, you know, you hear a lot of chiropractors say this, um, and when I first got into it, I didn't really understand it, but you'll hear a lot of chiropractors say, in which I hold true for myself, is that um, I don't feel that I chose chiropractic. I feel like it chose me because the circumstances just unfolded um, in such a way that I couldn't have planned it out. Um, so I originally went to school, I uh, went to Jackson State University um, for dentistry, uh, just because um, I went for a family reunion in uh, Atlanta one time. And went to my cousin's house and, you know, she had a three story house. And I was like, I've never seen that before. I was like, what do you do? It's like, oh, that's what I'm doing. I my ass will make it up. And so, uh, so I ended up going to school for dentistry. But I like towards the end of my, you know, I think it was around about my junior year. So I just kind of had an awakening. It's like, I, I don't want to do this at all. You know what I mean? Like, I just literally chose this profession just because someone had a nice house. You know what I mean? And right. I had no passion for it whatsoever. But um, strangely enough, I was at a seminar for dental students and someone just happened to mention chiropractic. I, to this day, I have no reason why, uh, no understanding like why that person brought up chiropractic. But I researched it and I started to you know, find out more about the, the philosophy and the, the goal of chiropractic was to heal the body from within with no medications or surgery. And I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and then the more and more I started getting into it, you know, like things just started happening. I was speaking to um. Yeah, my uh, wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, you know, telling her about, you know, I'm kind of interested in this chiropractic thing. And then lo and behold, there was a recruiter uh, from Life University, uh, Mr. Michael Harris, who's uh, he was a black man who was, uh, you know, he felt like it was his mission to travel to HBCUs to get more black people into the chiropractic profession. So he literally came to my school 
just like just looking for people. And my wife just happened to run into him and I was at home. She texted me, he's like, hey, there's this guy from a chiropractic school here and he's interested in talking to you. So I just hopped in the car and drove out and it was just like, like that. He set me up for a visit. I went to visit the school, it was in Atlanta and I was sold, <laughs> you know, and so um, from that point, um, like I guess I got into chiropractic because I felt it was a good profession. Um, you know, I helped some people and once I got into it, I really started to understand the power that chiropractic had to really not only just, you know, help someone with some pain and discomfort they were feeling, but really help to revolutionize their health and transform a community because I started to see that being around a lot of powerful doctors who were, you know, not just cracking people's necks and backs, but we were taking families out of, you know, uh, generations of sickness and disease, out of medical poverty, into health and wellness, into, you know, living a life that we were all designed to live. And so once I saw that, I was like, I'm hooked. I was like, this is what I'm dedicating the rest of my life to. Um, and it's been, it's just been a beautiful journey ever since. Awesome. 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 Thank you for sharing those quick stories about how you kind of um, both came to love what you're doing. And, and now uh, just taking the time to just refine your skill set and to be subject matter experts, I think is super, super, super important. Um, you know, right now, today, one thing you can't deny is the, is just the uh, the effect that, that COVID has had on every single one of us, um, whether it's a family member who may have passed away or, you know, loved ones, you know, uh, you know, family members or colleagues. And, and through that, um, just even the social climate today, um, I, I, I want you both to maybe take some time and maybe just share, you know, what are some of the, the, the stressors of just our daily lives that you're starting to see and how you are, you know, executing your, your individual practices? You know, um, David, let's start with you. Um, what I'm seeing here is there is people who are conscious. Those in to be, um, they found a way to um, invest in that, you know, what um, you know, social distancing, but still finding a way to stay out of um, Those individuals, I see kind of pushing forwards. And then there's the individuals that are starting to really understand and realize that, you know, as they see these people, um, individuals getting complications, respiratory complications in COVID uh, or during having COVID, there's um, and they want to get, but it's very hard, especially, you know, whenever we were very, you know, the obvious reasons, um, I think we're really starting to take more of an interest in trying to at least get started and do something um, so that they're not a part of the high risk population. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's tough. It's unfortunate that it takes that life or death scare for people to start kind of waiting that fire stays lit, you know, one thing that I hope, hope that fire stays lit and do the little things and try to be mindful day to day, try to be active, try to make the best food choices, things like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's very, it, it's, it's a very trying time, you know, with people coming in and not switch, but still needing to be active. Agree, agree. Thank you for that. Thank you for the response. Dr. Freeman? Yeah, um, one of the things that um, I think even last year, I think one of the, the things that I was able to take from, uh, you know, with with constantly, you know, every, every single person, every single day, you know, with COVID constantly being in the news, and it really forced people to put, like, health, like, right there in front of people's faces, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We kind of created this culture in a society where we can get so caught up in, um, you know, elevating, moving forward, promotion, hustle, grind, um, you know, the day to day, just staying on the hamster wheel, you know, um, and putting our health on the back burner, basically. But, you know, last year where everything just completely shut down 
And not only did everything shut down, but you look on, you know, the news, social media, like you can't get away from people just talking about health or sickness. Or so what it did was just kind of it put it right there in front of everyone. And for the first time, I feel like the vast majority of the country was concerned with health. And so what that allowed me to do is to then have better conversations with people because their minds were more primed for it. You know, and because of, you know, whether people were, you know, fearful uh, or whether people were in power, um, you know, it was able, we were able to have a, a conversation about real health. And I think that's the biggest thing that we can take away from this is that we need to get back to creating real health because there, you know, whether it's, whether it's COVID, whether it's any type of issues, um, then what we need to do is focus on creating health from within because, you know, when, you know, the fears and the, um, you know, the, 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 uh, I want to say hype, but when the fears and all of the COVID uh, things start to die down, well, guess what? There's still going to be uh, viruses. There's still going to be sickness and disease. There's still going to be diabetes, blood pressure, cancer, um, all of these different things. And so it, we always have to keep health at the forefront of our mind, not just in a situation where people feel like, you know, it's life and death, because at the end of the day, your health is always life and death. You know, but it's just like if it's in, you know, if someone feels that it's more of an immediate death, we'll take it more seriously. But you're not thinking about your future self that, you know, maybe, you know, 5, 10, 15 years down the road, they may be dealing with a life threatening issue because you're not doing the proper things to maintain your health today. And so I always want to come from a place of empowering people to take their health back into their own hands and help people to understand that your body is a self healing, self regulating organism. You yeah. just, to yeah. get out of the way, you know what I mean? Like understand that your body is created and designed to heal. And you, your, your body is created perfectly to be able to live in the, on this planet where you just have to put yourself in the best position to win and not do things that's detrimental to your health that like you talked about that put you in that high risk category, um, whether it's for, you know, uh, COVID or, or any other issues. Cause one of the things that you saw with COVID was that people that had comorbidities had more severe, you know, reactions with COVID. Well, it's because the people with the comorbidities, like it's already shown you that their bodies are already dysfunctional. So sure. already at a dysfunctional state, then it yeah. doesn't matter what comes along and you're going to have a harder time with it. And one of the reasons why I feel that as America, we're getting hit so hard by this is because if you looked at the current health statistics in our country, you know, even, you know, years before this, you can see that the health trends just keep getting worse and worse over time. And so the health of a nation is already at risk or is already low, then you have something like a new virus comes in and it is gonna wreak havoc. So we just have to now get back to like, just really being um, extremely intentional about taking care of ourselves and making our health a priority, not just something that, you know, um, you know that kind of pops up in our mind at the beginning of the year. <laughs> Agreed, agreed wholeheartedly. I know um, when you think about specifically chiropractic care, I know there were things that I had, you know, kind of going into it. And I, I've been adjusted a couple of times before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, each experience was different, you know. So having that uh, rapport with, with your personal trainer and with your chiropractor are, are both super, super, super important. Um, when people are just wanting to just know more, about either chiropractic care services or, or maybe, uh, you know, finding that perfect personal trainer. Um, what are some ways in which both of you feel that people can go about finding that right fit for them? Yes. Um, man, I think you hit the nail on the head when you brought up before. Um, you know, opening up the, the door and through conversation, developing before um, with that that professional, they, that relationship is what's very important. Um, you know, we can't we can't do our job very well if we don't have a good, positive working relationship. Or knowing what's going on, not so much not just fitness or physical performance, but you know, somewhat what's going on in their personal lives. You know, what kind of stresses are they dealing with at work? Um, what kind of stresses are they dealing with 
personal relationships. Um, what's the nutritional habits like? What's your household nutritional habits like? You know, having rapport with them allows you to know how best to um, prescribe or create guiding that person. Um, and so I would, I would, you know, bring up what Dr. Freeman talked about: conversation, get to know, get to know the person. Maybe you go through a referral, you know, a friend, a family member that you trust. And you try to go that route and then get to know the people, um, you know, that you want to do, that you want to work with you and help you along this, this health and fitness journey. Yeah. Awesome. That, uh, the, the referral thing is, is huge because, you know, it's, it's different from, you know, someone speaking to me or, you know, any type of professional about, you know, what they need to do, you know, not to say that the people don't, you know, trust, but it's just that, all right, like, this is your job. Of course, you're going to say that to me. You know what I mean? Um, but say, you know, a friend or a family member who has no skin in the game, really, it's like, listen, I don't I don't benefit at all from telling you to go to this person. But um, and then too, it's like when you see where someone came from, you know, if you had especially like someone comes to me, I've had patients who, you know, can barely get around, you know, they can, you know, can barely walk or constantly having headaches all the time. But then their friends see them. It's like, oh, like you're a completely different person now. Like, what have you been doing? You know, okay. Um, that, you know, that speaks more than anything because now it's like, they don't even have to say anything. It's like, all right, I saw how, you know, I saw how, uh, damaged and everything you were before, but now you're a completely different person. And this is the only thing that you've been doing different. It's like, okay, yeah, I want that. Um, but there's, there's nothing more powerful than a connection. You know what I mean? And then don't get me wrong. Like yeah, a lot of times, cause even d- through COVID, like I haven't been able to go out and speak at, you know, different engagements that I typically do or go to health screening. So it's been harder for me to meet patients. Um, but, you know, so Facebook and Instagram and all these different social media activ- uh, sites, they've allowed people to just, you know, people throw my name out there. And so they know about me. And like I said, they trust those people, but there's nothing more powerful than just having a conversation with someone, you know? And for, for me, I tell people all the time, it's like, listen, like if you are interested in going somewhere, like just, see if that, you know, whoever it may be, will set up a consultation with it just so that you can go in and just feel the energy. You know what I mean? Um, I've had patients do that before. It's like, listen, I'm not necessarily going to start care here. I just want to come and talk and just see, you know what I mean? And I'll, I'm perfectly fine with that. Like, yeah, just come to the office. You know, there's no appointment. Like, we'll sit out in the lobby, you know, and we'll just talk, you know, and just to see, like, if our, if our personalities fit together, if you, you know, some some people don't even like you know I don't like the office layout so I'm not gonna come here you know what I mean <laughs> but that's the thing like when it's your care all of that stuff matters because right if you, you know if, if you're not comfortable in the environment then it's going to affect your results and so um, it, it's really just about um, it's really just about I like can talk about just being intentional you know what I mean and and take sure. it seriously and when you take it seriously you know it's just like when you want to go to a you know, a a restaurant or, you know, go on vacation or stay at a hotel. It's like, you're going to do your due diligence to find out if that's actually where I want to be, where I want to go. So it's the same thing with, uh, you know, finding a health provider. Like you have to be comfortable in all aspects of it before you actually make that decision. And um, like when you do that, you're going to find someone that you you fit perfectly with. For sure. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Go ahead, David. What? I I want to um, you know, Dr. Freeman talked about intent, and and one of the one big thing that I found is a lot of people um, when they're getting into caring about their health, they don't know what they need. A lot of people don't even know what they need, and therefore they don't even know where to look. And um, Dr. Freeman, you may have some ideas, you know, and you know, I, I kind of think like. One starting point could be, you know, your primary care physician, they typically, they're not going to steer you wrong. And they'll tell you like, hey, you need to go, you need to go and get adjusted. Because, I said, you know, sometimes someone will come to me and they want, they'll come to a trainer like myself and they start describing things that need a chiropractic treatment. And they don't realize that I don't do that, you know. Right. And, a lot of people will go to it and there's there's trainers that will go outside of their lane and they'll try to provide care in a way that's outside of their scope and that individual doesn't know 
you know, they don't know the difference. Sometimes they don't know the difference, unfortunately, is on to the next. And I think a good starting point, another good starting point aside of a referral is really make sure that so that way you know exactly where you should go and who you should be trying to get a referral to. Right. Absolutely. One of the biggest things yeah. too that I do is um, I make it very clear what my approach is, what my philosophy is, what I'm after, what I do, just so there's a person knows that, listen, either this is the place for you or this isn't the place for you. You know, and I want to make that very clear in the very beginning to where you don't come in and you've been here a few weeks and realize, oh, like this isn't what I wanted at all, you know? Right. So, um, but like I said, it takes that, you know, that, that professionalism of the person as well, too. Like you said, like there's some people who will try to go outside of their scope, but it's like, I let people know, it's like, you know, like, like, uh, you know, even, even like you talked about DJ, how you've been to multiple chiropractors and had multiple experiences. It's like that. You can go to 20 different offices and have 20 different experiences because of their approaches and philosophies. There's hundreds of chiropractic techniques that, that can be done. Um, so I like to make it very clear at the very beginning um, how I approach care, uh, why I do what I do, and let that person decide, like, okay, yeah, this is what I'm looking for or not. And then you know, from that point, if they do want what I offer, then great. Give blood, sweat, and tears for them. If not, then I will point them in the right direction. Because at the end of the day, I just want to help them get to the life that they want to live, whether it's with me or not. You know, I think that's the way all healthcare practitioners should be. You know, it's not personal, it's about us. It's about making sure that we're taking care of the community. All right, and you, you're, you both are making very valid points. I know one thing that I learned even from our previous episode is that um, specifically within the BIPOC community, we need to do a better job of just advocating for ourselves when it comes down to our health care, meaning that we just don't want to jump in with both feet. With, with a maybe with a chiropractor or or with a personal trainer or even with our primary healthcare physicians, it, you know, it, it does us well to really take the time to have some of those conversations from the onset. Well, um, to really, like you said, be able to connect with those professionals that can really tie into your lifestyle, what you have going on, um, stressors at work, stressors at home. Uh, all those are super, super, super important. So I thank you all for validating that point. You know, because I strongly believe that that if we're gonna advocate for ourselves on our jobs and at homes or in other relationships, why not with those folks that are helping us take care of our bodies? Right? So um, great point, great point. As far as uh, you, you guys almost answered a couple of my other questions just directly just through this conversation, and I appreciate that. Uh, but when it comes down to that initial consultation, if you don't mind, please share what an initial consultation looks like for you. Just so if someone does reach out to you via social media or, you know, wants to you know, call your office and schedule an appointment, please just kind of give us a rundown on what that initial consultation kind of looks like. Um, the initial consultation for us um, typically depends. If someone comes in, for example, they want to work on developing the strength. I like to take them through a general, uh, after they answer a, you know, a basic questionnaire about their medical profile to make sure that there's no um, serious chronic issues going on. Um, after that, we'll, I'll take them through an initial workout that's pretty general in nature. It kind of shows me how they move in, in different directions. It shows me some basic movements, upper body strength, lower body strength, flexibility, things of that nature. And it's also giving me an opportunity to see where they are mentally. So, uh, you know, I'll, it, it kind of showed me what their personality is like, what their work ethic is like, um, the level of experience, you know, with fitness in the gym. And, you know, as they're going through the workout, I'm kind of making notes to myself um, on things that I see. And then afterwards, I'll give them feedback and, and kind of confirm, like, yeah, you know, you're in the right place. You know, what you're looking for, um, what you're wanting to develop is actually what, you know, you need to develop. Because sometimes those two things aren't in line. Sometimes people will come in and they think they need one thing, but they need something else. Um, or, uh, you know, for the kind of what I said, like, there's a lot of different styles of fitness. There's a lot of different modalities. Um, there are certain things that we don't do, um, types of training. And there's certain things that we do really well. And we'll be clear and say, like, hey, all right, after this initial workout, you know, here's what my thoughts are and here's what I think it does for you going forward. Thank you. Okay. And, uh, and as far as uh, my office, though, so the first thing we do is um, sit down 
down. I just, you know, just basically just get a brief history. Um, not only like what somebody may be experiencing at the time, um, but, you know, just get a brief history of like just everything, you know, that they've experienced throughout their life. Because it's a lot of times, especially when it comes to chiropractic care and it comes to the spine, a lot of times it's some of the smallest, most mundane things that happen to you that set off a ripple effect that cause issues later on down the line. Uh, like, for instance, like, you know, we just had a lot of these, uh, like the snow and ice storms that we had. Yeah. Um, you know, there was, you know, it was not as short as the slip and falls. You know, I see those. Right. <laughs> they got the ring cameras on their, uh, in, on their front porch now. So it's catching all the slips. And <laughs> but everybody's come back showing me these videos where everybody's um, you know, slipping and falling on the ice. But, you know, yeah. thing like that, where, you know, if I sit down and I ask, you know, have you had any like previous traumas or anything like that? You're like, well, no, not really, because you don't comprehend that this small little fall or accident that I've had um, can actually contribute to, um, you know, back pain that, you know, is now debilitating, but that slip and fall was like five years ago, you know. Um, so we start off doing a consultation, basically, and you get in the history. Um, and I'll explain to them again, I'll explain to them my approach and my philosophy of care. Uh, and I'll start by basically explaining the true nature of chiropractic, like what chiropractic um, actually entails, the way I practice chiropractic. And then from there, uh, you know, just do posture evaluation, um, check out the range of motion, see how the spine is moving, um, you know, test the motion of the spine, see if there's any restrictions or any rotations, any abnormalities with that. And uh, if I do find anything uh, with any of my exam, uh, then I will take x-rays depending on what I find in my examination. Um, just because of my, my previous experience, like I, uh, I like to take x-rays on patients just because uh, I constantly found you know, throughout, there's always things there that you can't necessarily determine just from an examination itself. You know, because there's, there's, there can be fractures in the spine that have no pain at all. And if you go in and touch that area, then you can cause uh, you know some serious harm for that patient. Uh, my very first patient, when I was seeing uh, patients in school, I was actually starting to see patients outside of the school. Um, you know, I, you know any you know previous traumas, injuries, surgeries, anything like that. You know, he's like no, uh, but you know something just didn't seem right. So I took an X-ray of his neck, and his neck was fused from like you know, five cervical vertebrae that were fused together. And the surgery was like, you know, maybe, I wanna say it was probably about 20 years, you know, from the time that I saw him. So he completely forgot about it. <laughs> and surgery on his neck completely forgot about it. And so if I didn't take x-rays of him and I just went in and adjusted him, I could have caused some serious harm to that patient. Um, so just in my years, like that's typically what I do. And so from there, you know, I always like to do a thorough examination before I do any type of treatment, because at the end of the day, if someone's already coming in in a bad situation, I don't want to do anything to make it worse. Yeah, yeah no, I totally agree. So um, I will go ahead and raise my hand right now uh, because I am guilty of falling into uh, the YouTube chiropractic rabbit hole. <laughs> and I know I'm not alone. So, uh, you know, people who watch these clips, and if you aren't familiar, you can pretty much go on YouTube. You can see just this kind of medley of people just having all these different bones kind of cracked and pops and all that kind of good stuff. And I'm glad that you explained about that initial consultation because it's really good at helping some people kind of realign their expectations when it comes down to chiropractic care. Uh, not saying that that's not a part of it, um, sure. At the same time, you know, understanding how it's more of a it's just a one technique that's kind of used um, in in that field of chiropractic care. And it's just not you just don't go to get kind of pulled and stretched and and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't have to result in a, in a, in a, in a crazy amount of you know pops and, and things of that nature. Right. right. So um, thank you for helping me with that, because, you know, when you see these clips, it can actually terrify you. You know, I think that oh, maybe, no, I, I'm definitely uh, saying that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Cause I, watch, I watch some of those videos, too, just to see, like, what the reception is. Of it. And you know, I'll see some of the comments, like some people are like terrified of it. Um, you know, I've had patients that come in and say, yeah, like, I can't watch some of those videos, you know. Um, and I, 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 I have quite a few patients that come in that are like, you know, uh, scared to be adjusted, which is which is a completely normal thing if anybody ever feels like that. Like that's actually right. there's more people that come in 
that are nervous about getting adjusted than not. So, you know, every person that comes in that's nervous about getting adjusted thinks they're the only person. But like, no, that's actually the norm. And so <laughs> just in years of dealing with that, you know, I've learned how to, um, you know, help to put those people at ease. And, you know, and it's all about, you know, once you get started and you really see, but then it goes back to trust, you know, um, before. And putting them at ease really is not about me putting them at ease so that I can adjust them. You know, that that putting them at ease starts when, you know, they walk in the door. You know, how do they feel? How is the energy of everything? You know, when they sit down with me, you know, when I first walk in and meet them or, you know, shake their hand or whatever, greet them, you know, how how at ease are they with me? Um, because that plays a whole role in it, too. And so it's really about lending trust. I mean, when somebody has their hands on your neck, you know, the natural mm-hmm of the body is to, you know, it's, it's your own defense mechanism. It's like, wait a minute, right. some delicate stuff here. I need to protect myself. Um, and also, too, I, I know that if anybody is um, any hesitant about getting adjusted, I can tell they're very tense. I won't do any treatment with them that day just because um, my care is more than about me just doing what I need to do to the body. Like, it has to receive it as well. So if the body is not in a state to receive, then the care is not going to go as well as it needs to. So, um, you know, but those videos are good as well, too, because it's all about exposure. You know, you have more people. To I'll put out videos of myself, you know, on my Instagram or Facebook adjusting people. I don't necessarily have like the, you know, I, I keep having friends and stuff, like tell me to put like the yeah. crap videos out. <laughs> I just put like myself adjusting people. There's no like actual like sound of adjustments and things like that. But um no, it's just the exposure to everything as well, because I've literally had one guy come in not too long ago. It's like, look, I saw your video, you adjusted somebody. And I was like, that's exactly what I need. So then he came in. <laughs> um, no. No, it, it, it goes both ways. So, uh, for sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. No, no, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from. And you're, and you're right. It, it, it does kind of it is that thing that gives exposure. You know, it gets you the clicks. It gets you the likes. But um, it's also comforting to hear that, you know, you take more of a holistic a- approach to, you know, just, you know, the chiropractic field in the industry and the way that you handle your clients. And that's super important that you're listening to them, you know, in terms of those uh, any fears or apprehensions around getting adjusted specifically. So, David, now I have a question for you. I'm going to raise my hand in guilt again. Uh, you have a lot of people that when it comes down to being a to seeking a personal trainer, a lot of people feel as if they have to be in shape to get a personal trainer, right? Like I have to really make sure that I'm fit. So when I go to this trainer, you know, he can say, okay, or she can say, okay, you know what you're doing. You're proud. You know, you can kind of stick your chest out with some pride, right? So if you don't mind, share with us, you know, your approach to fitness in terms of maybe those who are just kind of saying, okay, I know I need to get off the couch, right? Or I know I need to maybe, you know, push back from the table a little bit. Or, you know, what are some things that can that we can do to help uh, us ease that apprehension? Because that's really an apprehension because you can talk yourself out of working out or out of maybe exploring a relationship with a personal trainer because you feel like you're not in shape enough or ready enough for that level of fitness. I uh, that is a big, a common issue. And I talk to them about sustainability. Mm-hmm. And sustainability, when I describe it to them and explain it to the to the individuals that, you know, for example, I'll tell someone, you know, the reason why, you know, you're not where you want to be today is because the activities you were doing in the past were so intense and so random, they weren't sustainable. Either they led to a high rate of injury or they led to a mental burnout. You know, those two things are very real. And I try to get them to buy into, you know, taking baby steps. You don't need to be in shape. You don't have to get in shape today. You don't have to get in shape in 30 days and and try to block out all that stuff you see on TV, you know, because what's trendy and what's hot and what's clickable on Instagram and on the reality TV shows is you see trainers killing people. (laughs) You see trainers, you know, making you do high knees for three minutes. You know, you're doing push-ups until you can't, you know, do them anymore. Sweat's pouring off of you. And that looks, that looks, that intensity looks inspiring to a lot of people. And they see that and they say, man, that person's working so hard. I need to do that. But at the same time, 
they under, they're afraid. They're like, all right, but I don't want to die, so let me be in shape before I go to this trainer. And I just try to explain to them, like, that's not what it's about. The fitness that you see on Instagram, the fitness that you see in reality TV shows, that's just for viewership. At the end of the day, the best fitness for your body is the one that you can sustain long term, you know, and you have to get started by taking small steps. And so I just get them to buy into that. And a lot of times with the initial workout, we'll do something short. We'll do something that's very low intensity. It still may be in line with what their goal is. It still may be strength. It still may be conditioning, but it's something that's slow and it's something that's easy to where they understand like, wow, okay, I didn't die. I didn't die today. All right. You know, they understand that this is a process that we are supposed to be progressive with. Um, that's the hard part, you know, just trying to get them to buy into that idea that it's a process and you don't have to kill yourself, you know, every single workout. No, I, I definitely uh, agree with that. And I thank you for speaking to that because so many people are kind of at that place, you know, especially with us, so many more people working from home now. You know, our posture is so much more important, you know, paying so much more uh, of attention to our daily activity, um, just to even give some structure to your day. You know, if it's just, you know, starting your day with a 20 or 30 minute walk, you know, that could be a, a great investment into your health. And and also, I'm sure kind of helped to you increasing that flexibility and mobility and, and things that, you know, Dr. Freeman was speaking to that, that even, you know, he may assess. So it kind of really ties in together. Um, one question I did want to ask both of you all is, do you ever stop a session out of sake for the need of the client to, to say, hey, you know, as a personal trainer, I think you should see, see a chiropractor, you know, first before we kind of move forward. Or even, you know, as a chiropractor, you say, hey, maybe with this, you know, element included in your daily life of more physical activity or prescribe maybe some physical activity to help with certain specific problems as you are dealing with your clients? Yeah, it's happened a few times. Answer first. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it, it's happened a few times where we've had a few clients that we've, we've stopped their program. And, um, you know, one client that I'm thinking about, she was already kind of, she was already seeing a, a, a doctor. I'm not sure uh, exactly what practice, but she was already under the care of a, of, a, of a doctor for some back issues that she was having off and on. And so um, we saw that the programming wasn't really, it, was, it wasn't progressing because of those issues. And that it was just best that she focus on that, on that rehab, on that therapy first before diving back into uh, into a fitness routine. So, yeah, absolutely. It happens every once in a while. It doesn't happen often, but it definitely does happen. Yeah, he's absolutely right. It, 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 it does happen every once in a while, but typically, especially with the, the chiropractic care that I, uh, the way that I approach chiropractic care, it's all about enhancing the body's function. And so no matter what you do, if it's, you know, you have to, you know, be with a physical trainer or if you have to, you know, do a new nutritional plan or, you know, whether you're going to seek, uh, you know, any type of therapy or get referred anywhere else, at the end of the day, you still have to make sure that your body is functioning properly from the inside through your nervous system. And so the chiropractic care is focused on enhancing the function of the nervous system. So no matter what you're doing, you need to have a proper functioning nervous system. And so unless there's like some uh, really severe uh, issues such as, you know, there's a, I had a patient come in uh, for, for evaluation one time and uh, it's literally just like fractures all over his spine, you know, in cases of like there may be a, uh, you know, a hernia in, in uh, like a, a abdominal aorta where, you know, any type of adjustments could cause the hernia to burst basically or, you know, if someone's coming in and I'm, you know, suspecting it's like, hey, this seems like a like kind of a 911 issue. This is something that I need to be dealing with right now. You need to go to the hospital immediately. Um, you know, there are, you know, rare cases of that, but yeah, absolutely. You know, like I said, as a, you know, as someone dealing with health, like you have to be, number one, you have to be, uh, you know, aware of that as well too, but that's your responsibility to then see something and be like, okay, yeah, this is, you know, this isn't about me. This is about this person. I need to do what's best for them at this moment and get them exactly where they need to be. Um, but yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, with me, like I make sure that, listen, like this is a place of health, but it's not your only place of health. You know what I mean? Like this is just 
one small facet of your health. Like you, you can't just come here and expect all of your problems to magically go away. Like everything you do outside of here uh, plays a critical role in, in as well too, because you spend more time away from here than you do in here. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you have to have different uh, avenues of health. Yeah so, yeah, so the reason for the ask behind the question is that when it comes down to certain industries, some of them get a bad rap, right? Let's, let's be honest about that. You know, some folks think about personal trainers or chiropractics, you know, chiropractic practitioners as folks who just want to get paid at the end of the day, right? They just want to just, you know, is there anything wrong with you? Yes, something's wrong with you, but come back. You know, like, you know, that's the thing that people just, so to hear you talk about one, sustainability, but really even above that, um, just the fact that, hey, this isn't your only place, you know, of, of health, right? This is a part of the strategy, but this isn't the end all be all, right? So I think that's important for people to hear is that you understand where you fit in terms of providing uh, vehicles that help lead to holistic health. But at the same time, you also realize that it's not the only avenue as well. So. That should be, I think, comforting for our audience to hear. You know, and I, I appreciate that as well. And I'm sure, like, like Mr. Freeman kind of said, like, you know, one of the joys behind what we do is seeing people get better. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I know, like, my style of training, I'm not so much interested in trying to get trying to get someone skinny. I find joy in seeing people get more functional. Functional can mean for us, functional can be um, being more athletic, you know, taking a kid that has no coordination, no strength, no body awareness and seeing that person improve or seeing a, a person go from being totally inactive to developing a routine. Like we want to see people get better. And that's, that is one of the things that brings a lot of passion and joy, you know, behind what we do. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, no, it's funny in the uh in Oregon, doctors didn't get paid unless patients got better. <laughs> <You know>? Yes. <laughs> well, I think that's you know that, that that's not a terrible thing <laughs> to go back to because it, it'll put people back in the proper perspective, you know what I mean? Um but yeah, no, he's absolutely right. And there's there's no you know, even though don't get me wrong now, I, I do want to get paid. <laughs> but there's, of course. <laughs> uh, there's no amount of money that can um that, that can compensate for like seeing someone come in and where they are, you know, either physically or more mentally as well too. Because no matter at, at the end of the day, whether it's with you know their physical body, whether they want to you know get more physically fit or coming in for chiropractic care, it's the mental side of it that really takes the biggest hit. And so to see them then improve and to see their minds. Uh, get to a place that it needs to get to because then you get to see the real person. You know what I mean? Like when when people are suffering from different things, whether it's from, you know, um, actual physical, you know, pain and discomfort, or they just don't like the way that they look, or they don't feel confident in themselves because they know they're not applying themselves through fitness and things like that. And they go through that and they they develop the discipline to to go through a plan and follow it and stick to it and push through themselves. You know, you might not kill them every day, but there are some days that they do die. And it was that pride in them to then see the real them come out. You know, it's literally like you are, you know, like taking this person and created an entirely different person and seeing a life just pop out in front of your eyes. Like there's there's nothing that compares to that. No, I, I agree. And and I think um this topic is one that really resonates with so many people, you know, because everybody has faced some sort of a physical ailment at some point in their life, right? I mean, it's kind of one of those things that people say, oh well. You know, even when you're young or whatever, you know, if you if you feel like you haven't gone through something yet, you know, just keep living. Right. You know, it, something's going to come your way sooner or later. So um, with that being said, we actually have a couple of questions from the audience that I want to toss your way and uh, and get some good responses. So I want to thank our audience for, for tuning in and asking these questions. So one of them is, is that uh, when it comes down to uh, chiropractic care uh, and also personal training services, what, what, what should someone look for in terms of how much these services cost? Um, I go back to depends on what the person needs. So it depends on how much hands-on um, coaching or training the person needs. It can pretty much range as low as, I would say, 
15 20 dollars a session um it can go all the way to 80 90 dollars a session it depends on how much um depends on the individual needs so for example if the person is somewhat familiar with exercise and working out they don't have to be an athlete but if they're just comfortable with getting outside and they're able to get through 30 minutes 45 minutes of exercise and they're pretty mobile they have pretty good function then they may be able to join a group workout class you know an outdoor boot camp an indoor aerobics class spin class in in that setting they could pay around 15 20 dollars a session if someone is completely new to fitness you know meaning they have limited function mentally they don't their work ethic isn't so developed um, they don't know how to read through a program um, they're starting from scratch then that person may be looking to spend somewhere around 40 50 dollars a session just because they're paying for that trainer to be hands-on just for them you know so they're getting exclusive time they're getting a individual program um and so it gets a little bit more expensive if the trainer has to be um um one-on-one -on -one with that individual but between a group workout and a one-on-one -on -one session there's a lot of different options in between but it comes it always comes back down to what does that individual need um you know how beginner are they and what physical limitations they have mm. okay yeah and uh, as far as pricing goes i'll speak for myself just because i can't really speak for other chiropractors just because the range of chiropractic prices is are literally like all over the place because it depends on so many different things it depends on what that chiropractor is doing on that particular visit versus um you know like how you know, the, the the level of treatment that you get basically. And for me personally, the typical cost of an adjustment, like just one adjustment uh, ranges from 30 to $40 or so, but I don't charge per visit. Um, some other chiropractors may. Um, what I typically do is I look at, uh, when a person initially comes in, we go through, like I said, the exam examination I uh, do a treatment to see how they respond to care. And then once I do that, I'll see what type of plan that they need because the goal of my care is spinal correction. So I'm all about the mm -hmm. proper structure of the spine. And so to correct the structure of the spine initially, that takes a few months to do with consistent uh, work. And so what I typically do is I come up I, with care plans for that particular person based on the level of degeneration and the abnormal structure of the spine that I see, which can range anywhere from four months to eight months, depending on, like I said, just depending on what I see with the exam. And from there, I charge uh, monthly. So you have a, you can, you can monthly, you can pay all, uh, typically I do monthly, but you can pay for the plan entirely up front. You can split it up. Like I work with everyone because I see people with all different types of financial situations um, and I work with everyone because the last thing I want is for money to be a roadblock between the care and people need. Um, but typically uh, on the average, like if you're paying monthly payments, it ranges anywhere from two to 300 a month. Um, gotcha. Just for the initial portion. And then once we actually get that initial corrective portion and we get into more of like the wellness care, then from there, like I said, the care drops down significantly and that ranges anywhere from uh, either about 80 to 150 a month. No, thank you for sharing. I think that's super important for people to be able to understand, uh, because like you said, when you talk about spinal correction, that really is the, you know, the the singular, you know, that ties our whole bodies together, you know, Absolutely. so making sure that our, our spine is intact is, you know, super important. So, I mean, and I'm not here to speak for everyone. Like I said, I know that there's people in, all, in a lot of different, you know, financial situations, but I think that the numbers that you all put out there are definitely ones that make the services realistic and attainable. And I think that's super important for people to be able to understand that one, you're open to having those conversations around the cost for the services, but also that you're able to tie those directly to the benefits of taking advantages of, of, of your services. You know, I think that's super important. So thank you all for doing that. We have one more question from our audience. Um, and it was, uh, are there any exercise programs out there? And this is at David, was, are there any exercise programs out there for seniors? 
Um, there are. Um, there, there is there's several programs. Like there's programs like Silver Sneakers um, that are out there, um, and there's many others. You kind of got to look for them. Um, and aside aside from programs, there's a lot of trainers that specialize working with seniors. Um, and so that's, that's one of the things where it'd be very valuable or very good for for her to um when you're looking for a trainer to make sure that there's someone that that has a lot of experience working with seniors and and not just that but making sure that the facilities and um you know their their training approach is something that is safe and sustainable um for you thank you thank you for that response um one last question from me uh, I would like to know from each of you all, um, what are some things that you do daily that uh, that kind of help set yourself up for success? You know, if it's just, you know, a certain stretch routine that you may have or if it's just maybe 30 minutes to yourself. Um, I know that you all are super productive every single day and you have a lot of you have people's health in your hands, basically. So, you know, you have to find different ways to decompress and to kind of set yourself up to be ready to kind of charge your battery. So if you don't mind, just share maybe with us a couple of uh, tips or tricks that you may do uh, just to kind of help us, you know, as folks who are not doing some of these things, things that we can easily implement into our lives. Do um, you mean like physically or like for fitness or for our business? Well, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm talking about just as far as just our, our just our physical fitness and well-being. Right. So. What are some things that you do just, just for yourself, you know, that you have to do to make sure that you can continue to operate at a high level? Um, I guess I'll, I'll do two things for me. One, like I've been so busy lately. I know I think Dr. Freeman can probably also agree. He may be in the same boat. You know, whenever you're in this industry, um, it becomes a, a challenge for us to also maintain care for ourselves. And one of the things that I've had to do and just accept is I've had to accept just doing what I can. So some days I would love to spend, you know, an hour and a half, two hours outside working out or whatever. And I may not just have that time. And not only that, but just from my day, I may be mentally exhausted, physically kind of, you know, tired, not really feeling like doing anything. And I've had to accept just doing what I can. So doing what I can for me, that may just be a 20 minute walk. Um, that may mean getting on the bike for 20, 30 minutes. Even though I want to do more, I'll just have to, I have to accept that doing what I can is better than doing nothing. And then number two for me, um, the mental aspect of motivation. Um, what really helps me is I, I may find music or there's some inspirational things that I like to listen to. Whenever I feel like I'm just kind of out of it, and it helps me focus, um, and and that's really big for me. So when I find my stuff is kind of lagging, and I know that physically I'm not tired, it's just it's more so mental. I'll try to find that source for me that kind of gets me back into it and allows me to do something. Again. Yeah, definitely the 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 physical aspect of it because um, you know with my job I have to make sure that you know. I have enough energy to see people and, you know, I'm, you know, pushing and lifting and twisting. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so I, I have to make sure, like, I, I do have a pretty, um, I work out at least, um, at least five, or six times a, a week or so. I do, I do a combination of, uh, I do training and I do boxing as well, too. I love boxing. Uh, and so, uh, like that's the physical aspect of it. But honestly, for me, the biggest thing is uh, the mental side of it um, with everything that I have going on, you know, like especially the type of person like I am. Um, and just, to, you know, just in full transparency, um, I battled with depression before uh, not too long ago. And so working on my mind is like something I constantly have to do. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Simple things like uh, I had a mentor tell me it's like one of the easiest things that you can do to have a productive day is to iron your clothes the day before, the night before. <laughs> and, you know, to, to do that or if you're going to the gym, like have your clothes already out and ready, because what you do is you wake up and you're already, you know, you already kind of start with an advantage. Um, and what it does, too, is you you set some intent as you're going to bed as well, too. You're already getting prepared for the next day. 
Um, but for me, it's literally waking up every day. Uh, you know, as soon as, you know, I would say as soon as my eyes open, but as soon as I'm conscious from waking up, immediately going into a state of gratitude, you know, because we, we typically have the tendency, well, I don't say we, I know I do. Typically have the tendency is as soon as you wake up, you immediately start thinking about things that you have to get done or things that you didn't get done yesterday, or you start going into, you know, a lot of these old stories that we keep playing ourselves, a lot of these negative thoughts that we keep repeating over and over again. And so as soon as I wake up, is going into a state of gratitude for something, you know, whether it's, you know, something small, you know, having sheets on the bed, you know, I, I, I'm able to take a hot shower, you know, or, you know, it's just oh, yeah. things like that we take for granted often. If we didn't have them, we'd be pretty messed up, you know what I mean? And so um, just doing that and then like setting intention for the day and like waking, like I, I can't stress how important it is to wake up before you need to. Yeah, you know, like a lot of people wake up exactly or right before they need to wake up. Yeah. And so what you do is you already start yourself in a state of chaos because you wake up, now you gotta rush, 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 and this, this, and then if one thing goes wrong, then it just starts a cascade effect of all that. But if you give yourself enough time, you get up, now you got plenty of time, you don't have to rush, you can focus, and then you can set to intent for the day. These are the things that I want to accomplish today. Um, you know, this is, you know, I want to have these emotions today. I want to speak to these people today. I want to uh, feel this. To, you, know, and you can set the tone for the day and go out into the world with some power because you started the day the way that you wanted to. You didn't start the day at the mercy of chaos, basically. Um, and as I'm going through the day, the most important thing is myself back to the moment. For sure. For me, I can have high levels of stress and anxiety because there are a thousand different things that I'm thinking about that I have to do. And I'm thinking about all of them at one time. And it's literally like you have a thousand different people just yelling at me that things need to get done. But it's like, all right, what am I doing? Like in this exact one, other stuff can wait. I'll deal with that, you know, at another time, um, which is where scheduling is really important. You know, I'm going to deal with um, this uh, emergency at this time. I'm going to deal with this at that time. So I don't have to think about it now. I'm going to think about that later on tonight at 730. You know what I mean? I don't need to think about it this afternoon at one o'clock. And so um, just being present and in the moment. And you know, I, I totally I totally agree with what you're saying. I know one thing that I do, I even shared this on our last episode, is that I take at least 30 minutes to an hour you know, um, before I go to bed, you know, just kind of putting myself in that state of gratitude and just really being, you know, thankful for everything that I was able to do and accomplish that day. And then, like you said, doing the same thing in the morning, you know, before I have to get up, giving myself that extra time in the morning, put myself in a place of being just thankful for being able to do the things that I do on a daily basis. You know, so I wholeheartedly agree with both of your strategies. I implement both of them and they're, they're both great. So Anyone out there listening, um, you know, all these these are the things that people face every single day. You know, we talk about depression. We talk about, you know, not thinking that we're you know good enough or in any aspect of our lives. And just kind of uh, doing that self-encouragement is something that definitely can help us uh, kind of close that gap and be just more realistic about where we are, because we are all our own worst critic. Right. You know, so anybody who's successful, they'll tell you that they're harder on themselves than anybody else could ever be. So thank you all for sharing your perspective, for sure. It's been it's been a great evening. This has been a great conversation. Uh, so many. I think we could have even went for another hour if we really needed to. Right. I mean, there's so many things that we can go or so many directions that we can go with this uh, particular topic. But I want to thank you all for participating in our second installment of our Mind, Body and Soul series. And for our audience and for you all, I want to want you to hang tight because we actually have a musical guest for this episode. So we are back on track with the music. We have Paris Ariana, and we wanna go ahead and, and talk to her for a bit as well. So I wanna thank you both for, for being here and, and taking the time um, and please hang on tight. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Hello. Hey Paris, how you doing? Good, how are you? Doing well, doing well. So thank you for taking the time to jump on with us this evening. I've already 
had the pleasure of listening to the project, listening to your full set. Uh, it was, it's an awesome piece of work. So uh, let's talk about the first music number that we're going to get into. Um, it's called Color Me Free. And okay. I listened to it. I like it. I, I love the fact that you're kind of talking about perceptions versus reality and some some of the perceptions that we even paint for ourselves, you know, so. Um, tell me if I'm hitting the nail on the head as far as the concept behind the song. Mm -hmm. Please feel free to expound. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, Color Me Free, you know, I wrote that song really to just express like a positive affirmation, basically. Because um, in the song, you know, lyrically, I'm talking about uh, just how each day is a new day, like for me to take charge of my life. And like, I have a line in there about you know, like you said, who cares about reality? You can rewrite your story, you know, and I actually believe that, like, if you don't like the way things are going in your life, then you got to shake it up and do something different, you know? <laughs> I'm right there with you, right there with you. So without further ado, let's get into the first track. Hey everyone, my name is Paris Ariana. This is my guitarist, Andrew, and we're really excited to be here today sing some acoustic R&B music for y'all. This is Color Me Free. You can find me sure everybody is at home even though you can't hear him right now so just know you're getting standing uh, <laughs> thank y'all so 
Yeah, for sure. Tell us a little bit about, um, you know, who you're listening to or who, or who are some of your more primary uh, musical influences? Because I hear a lot of things when I hear your music. So Yeah, I mean, I have a very um, eclectic taste, you know, but I would say some of my influences are um, Alicia Keys, Karim Bailey Ray, Alina Baraz, um, Erica Badu. Yeah. Yeah, definitely can hear a lot of those influences in the songs specifically. So um, now we're going to get into the next song, which is Almost Gone. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, Already, already Gone. gone. <laughs> already Gone. I'm sorry. So Already no Gone. So, uh, and I know this one is kind of like your uh, kind of like a independence anthem. You know, it's kind of mm -hmm. what I gathered from it. It's kind of like, you know, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm moving on and breaking out from a situation. So uh, yeah, talk about that a little bit. Just, you know, how you kind of. Kind of, kind of, what was the creative inspiration behind the song? I mean, already gone. It's just like, it's literally, I feel so many people can relate. Like when you know you're a good person, you know, like you're a catch and somebody tries to play you or act like you're always <laughs> going to be there and they come crawling back and you're just like, who? I'm already gone. <laughs> hey, we could sum it up any better. Let's go ahead and get, get into already gone. You know you might have had me fooled 
That was a good one right there. I think, you know, everybody Thank can you. identify with being there at some <laughs> point in their life. So I appreciate you putting that all together. And, and definitely those influences that you referenced as we led into the song, mm-hmm. you definitely can hear them, even specifically on that track. So, oh, yeah. We're on the, yeah, you know, so I, I know for, for me, when it comes down to music, I try to listen to full albums. You know, and I think that hopefully that's something that we're going to get back to. You know, it's easy just to listen to singles. But uh, with this particular project, did you have maybe a cohesive thought or a thread that was tying all of the music together? That's a good question. I mean, everything kind of came together really slowly and organically. Um, yeah. But I think the themes throughout the EP, Color Me Free EP, is just it's, you know, I'm talking about heartbreak and like more so insecurity and then moving into mm. like loving myself more and also just expressing like my full self, you know? Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, tell people where they can actually find your music. Yeah, you guys can find me on everything. Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, Paris Ariana on everything on Instagram. Um, follow me there so you can keep up with uh, what's next. Good deal. Well, now we're going to go into the last track, which is It's All Good. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Thank you for sharing your music. We're going to listen to this last track and then I'll be back to sign us off. I just want to say thank you to the African American Heritage Center for having us out. Again, my name is Paris Ariana. You can find me on everything, Apple Music, Spotify, and check out my new EP, Color Me Free. This last song is called It's All Good.
All right, I wanna say thank you to every single one of our guests this evening. Um, a big shout out to Paris Ariana, our musical guest, and also our guest for the, for the interview portion uh, for Mind, Body, and Soul, David Braswell and Dr. Marshall Freeman. Please feel free to look all of them up. Also visit our uh, Facebook page. We will have this interview archived as well as links to our YouTube channel where we will have all of the full set of, uh, of Paris Ariana uploaded and also the full interview as well. So thank you again. Also, I want to say a, a big thank you to Economic Development Department on behalf of the City of Austin, the Cultural Arts Division, and of course, my team, the staff here at the African American Culture and Heritage Facility.